Hi, I'm Robert Timms from the University of Oxford, and in this video I'm going to talk about some of the work we've been doing to develop simplified models at the cell scale. In this video I'm going to focus on pouch cell geometry, we've also got work that's applicable for uh, jelly roll or prismatic type cells, and I'll provide some references at the end of this video for those who are interested. So on the left here I've got a schematic of a single layer pouch cell, we've got a negative and a positive current collector, a separator in the middle, and two porous electrodes with some complicated microstructure. Now typically when we're modelling batteries we take this complicated microstructure and we do some kind of homogenization or volume averaging procedure to end up with something that looks kind of like this illustration in the middle. So now we have a three-dimensional model on the macro scale, the scale of the pouch, in which the um, electrodes are treated as some kind of homogenized media. And we've also got a micro scale problem, which contains information about the microstructure. So here we've still got this complicated microstructure in the positive and negative electrode. So instead of solving one three-dimensional problem with a complicated microstructure, we're solving two separate three-dimensional problems, one at the macro scale and one at the micro scale. And only the micro scale one contains this complicated microstructure. Now from there, typically we make some simplification about the microstructure. In particular, we often say that it's represented by spher spherical particles. Now you can have other options here. You can do things like assume the distribution of spherical particles or pick a different shape entirely. But for the purposes of this piece of work, the image we've got here on the right represents the kind of starting point for our modeling. So once we've got this physics-based model shown here on the left, um, we want to see if we can take this and develop something that's simpler. Really what we want is some model that's got a complexity comparable to an equivalent circuit model, but has the fidelity as a physics-based model. And these stars on this arrow here represent a whole range of models that we might like to try and develop. So maybe for some applications we don't care quite so much about computational cost and want more detail, whereas for other applications we want a really, really computationally inexpensive model and that may be happy to throw away some of the details. And maybe we can get the best of both worlds, and this is what I'll try to explore in this video. So it actually turns out we can develop a whole suite of reduced order models suitable for pouch cells. And our starting point for this analysis is this image in the top left here. So here, instead of solving a full 3D model of a pouch cell, we solve a whole collection of 1D models for the through cell behaviour, represented here by rods, which are all coupled together via 2D problems in the current collectors. We can make this simplification because pouch cells are typically much thinner than they are in the remaining two dimensions, so it's got a high aspect ratio. And also the conductivity of the current collectors is typically much larger than that of the electrodes or electrolytes. Now, once we start with this model, we can make simplifications either to the through cell models or to the number of models we have in the 1D dimension. Simplifications to a through cell model typically arise because of disparities in time scales. So within the battery model itself, we've got various different time scales which we can identify, things like the typical discharge time scale, the diffusion time scales and the electrode or electrolytes, or the reaction time scales. And by exploring different limits where one time scale is bigger than another or one time scale is comparable to another, we can develop a whole range of different reduced order models. And I'll talk more about these in the next slide. Going down the columns instead of across the rows, we make simplifications to the transverse model. Now these simplifications typically arise because of uh, various different length scales appearing in the model and various conductivities. So typically we're comparing the thickness of the pouch to the height or width, and we're comparing the conductivity of the current collectors to that of the electrode and electrolyte. So when the current collectors are sort of very conductive, we might get away with solving just a single single average model, um, as represented in the second row here. And in this model, we still solve a 2D problem in the current collectors, which we can use to compute a resistance associated with the current collector and the placement of the tabs, for example. And if the current collectors are even more conductive, then the potential is uniform everywhere, the behavior is uniform within the current collectors, so we can do away with them altogether and just solve a 1D model. Now let's take a look at simplifications to the three cell model. Starting with the dual for new model, we can use asymptotic techniques to derive a single particle model and a correction to this, a single particle model with electrolyte effects. And this reduced order model is orders of magnitudes faster to solve 
and the dog for a new model, you give errors on the order of a few millivolts. And you can take a look at the paper for the details here, but by doing this in a systematic way, we can ensure we've got the correct correction terms to the normal single particle model, and we can make good estimates on the error that we're going to be making whenever we use this model. And here this gives you this range of models that we're talking about. You can choose DFN at one end of the spectrum, SPM at the other end of the spectrum, and you can get these correction terms in between. So here we are really getting a model that's got the, or approaching the fidelity of the DFN with a computational cost similar to that of the SPM. Now let's take a look at making simplifications in the other direction, that is the transverse model. So here, what we're really deciding is how many of these three cell models do we want to solve? Do we need to solve a large collection of three cell models? Do we need to solve just a single average model? Or do we need to do away with the current collectors entirely? And in these papers that are shown here on the bottom left, we um, explore the various limits in which each of these models is appropriate and try and quantify the errors you make when going from one model to the next. Now clearly some of these models are much more computationally expensive than the other. In the top model, uh, shown in the middle images there, you're solving a large number of potentially complicated electrochemical models. If you've got a large pouch cell, you might need a lot of these. So maybe you're operating a regime where you actually only solve one or a couple of these models. In these papers, we try to provide a critical comparison of each of the models in the original 3x3 grid that I showed a few slides ago. And what we really wanted to try and ask was, is it better to use a lot of simple 3 cell models or fewer, more complicated 3 cell models? So if I've got some fixed computational budget, how should I spend it? Do I want the most complicated electrochemical model? Or do I want to use a lot of simple models? And we really compared how each of these different scenarios um, compared with one another in different operating conditions. And it really is application dependent. And we try and give some uh, guidance on which you should use depending on your application of interest. So just to finish off, I'll flush up the relevant publications for this work. Now, as I said, most of this work has focused on pouch cell models, but we've also done some similar analysis in uh, cylindrical or prismatic cells, um, which you can take a look at there. So if you've got any questions on this work, uh, please get in touch. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you.